Hey, Build Show. Steve Basic Architect. Yeah, we're out at our off-site build. This is the, uh, I'd say walkout, but in this case here, this is probably considered a drive out, right? So we're gonna have a garage door on here. We have access to the back of the house. This is all shop. Um, you know, standard detail for the floor. We're gonna do two inches or two layers of two inch R10. So I have R20 under my feet right now. This is the Formular, this is their NGX product. This is their low GWP blowing agent, um, rigid foam here. You can see we have our superior walls that were our precast walls all around us. Now, a couple things about the uh, superior wall is that they actually have these little clips that fold down. Now, these are embedded inside and these fold down in that little clip there, you're able to click in rebar. And you can see here, yeah, there's a couple that are folded down here. And basically you clip in the rebar here and that ties the bottom of the wall to the rebar cage and spreads that uh, tension force across the floor system inside that rebar cage. So we don't pour the foam, even though this is taped, we're not gonna pour the concrete directly on top of the foam. Like all of our projects, you can see over here, we have it somewhat layered. Um, we had some crazy rain. I don't know if you've been following the weather, but out here in uh, central Mass, we got, I don't know, something like four inches of rain in eight hours, nine hours. Yeah, or in two hours, yeah. So it's, it's been crazy. So um, the, the site has actually fared very well, but you can see on top of the foam and beneath the slab, we're gonna have our Stego vapor retarder system here. And it comes, you know, they have their proprietary tape here. We'll turn it up. We'll pour the slab in here. This slab is also gonna be a radiant floor heated slab down here. We're down here in the workshop. Um, if we wanna kind of regress, we can go into the basement here and you can see what's below the foam. So those of you that are familiar with the superior wall system, you know there is no footing. It's basically just a bed of stone that the wall sit on and uh, we'll fill up a little more stone here. We're running some electrical conduits and we have some stuff to do. This will get leveled out and then we'll basically do the two layers of two inch foam. We actually have a piece of it here, so you can see it in its entirety here, right? So that's uh, basically what we're talking about right there. Four inches, two layers of R10, so R20. That'll go underneath here, and then we'll have our stego like we have it out there, and then we'll pour our four inch concrete slab on top of that and we'll have our radiant floor buried inside that concrete slab for a nice warm floor. And uh, hence, we'll have a fully uh, heated, thermally broken slab with a vapor retarder on there. We'll have the uh, applicable radon vents and such that are happening down around the corner. But let's head back to the studio. We'll pull up a detail and uh, we'll walk through the slab assembly. See you back there. All right, so polling question. Who wouldn't want a basement under their five bay garage for a workshop? Yeah, no one said no ever. Um, anyways, it's, uh, you know, a lot of cool things happening out there. And, uh, you know, we're putting some radiant heat in that flooring. So uh, we obviously want it insulated and conditioned. We have our superior walls in there. Those are all conditioned. So. Uh, we could talk about one of my favorite words, continuity. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that slab assembly. Of course, big reds in hand, details on the table. Let's get after it. All right, so broke out the detail here. Let me uh, show you what we're dealing with here. Give you a quick outline. This that I'm outlining here, this is the actual concrete outline of the superior wall. foundation system. All 
right? And you can see that that's insulated to R21. And it also, in some select places, you can go check the precast wall. I think I review it, but we have some areas where we have uh, holes drilled in there for electrical. Um, and we also have that face of it there that comes out and that has a metal stud on it. So you can very quickly apply a gypsum wall board or plywood, whatever you want to sheath your workshop in. And you could simply apply that to that. Now, a couple things that Superior Wall does, they have this wire in here that comes and it comes bent up. You lay it down and it basically becomes a holder for the reinforcing, but that helps tie the slab that you're pouring to the wall system there. And you can see what we did here. We have our rigid insulation, um, and this is four inches of R20. You used XPS there. Um, and um, put that underneath the slab. The slab itself is roughly about five inches thick, and that is going to have a series of radiant tubing that runs through it, right? So it's a radiant floor concrete finish happening there. And um, we did a uh, spray foam connector here. That the, home, the homeowner is doing a bunch of this work himself. So he put in the four inch um, XPS and then he had this little area, he just went around and spray foamed it to make that connection. Now, we have a little bit of a thermal break here. Yes, we do. Um, I will confess that our continuity is not 100%, but I will make the argument that if I have to do a thermal break, doing it down, you know, 10 feet in the ground, the delta across here is probably somewhere around 15 degrees. So it's not like the top of the wall where that delta might be, you know, 70 inside and zero degrees outside, where it's five times, you know, that number. So, you know, I, I always take the approach where I do the best we can with what we have. And when I say what we have, it's materials, it's systems, it's budget. All of this stuff gets knitted into that quilt of success, right? And, uh, you know, the concrete does go all the way in and pour up against that. So there is some physical connection and some lateral tie-in um, because as this goes down the wall, you have that metal stud there and then it'll go in the wall again and come back out at that metal stud and go back in. So that um, slab is getting woven into the wall there. We have a whole mat of rebar that gets in there as well as we did. You saw it out there and we made mention of it. We have our stego wrap that went up and we'll just simply cut that back later. But our stego is our vapor barrier, which I'm not too worried about given that the whole house you can see is on a stone bed. And if you saw from the earlier videos, I've actually made mention where the house was designed for water to migrate under. Right? We have a, a literal path of water migration under the building because of where it's located. The uh, superior wall foundation system made a really good choice because we don't have footings in this house. The actual wall, which can span up to a 48 inch um, opening, even though we don't, it's sitting on a nice level stone pad um, the whole way, but um, we don't need a footing there. It can just literally sit on that stone and there's a thing called like I think it's called the angle of repose but when this wall is 
asserting a vertical load there. When that vertical load hits the stone, it doesn't go straight down like that. It actually goes down like that. Right? So the, the bearing area that this is sitting on is actually transferred to a slightly larger bearing area through the stone. Because again, as it exerts its um, load on there, it is not a vertical transmission. It's actually an angular transmission so that the reaction from the ground is much wider than the load that it's carrying there. So you get some help from that. And that's why that stone works so well, because that load does expand out. We actually, you know, have this now as our footing dimension, where if that's 10 inches and let's just say this is 12, um, if that's a 45 degrees, then this is 12, that's 10, that's 12. We're at a 34 inch wide footing, which is, you know, that's a really good footing to have underneath that um, house. And again, it's a single story house. So we have the basement wall and then one floor of exterior wall and roof load. So it's really not, you know, this uh, very, very high load happening there. So anyways, we're going to get some uh, radiant tubing in. We are going to get our concrete slab poured and uh, maybe revisit this uh, video as uh, we make progress through it. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that. But that's our workshop slab floor assembly. All right, there you have it. Insulated slab. Getting ready for some radiant floor heating in that workshop. It's going to be a dream of a workshop. It's got a drive out garage door, fully insulated, radiant floor heating. Um, yeah, workshop to die for. Um, speaking to die for, if you're looking for more of Steve Basic Architect, yeah, we have hundreds of videos here on the Build Show Network. Go check them out. You know what I'm going to say? Science says watch them seven times. I'm just going by what they say. Um, if you're still looking for more, all of those uh, social channels, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, uh, TikTok, YouTube. Yeah, it's the basic architect on all of them. So go check it out. Unbuild It Podcast with Peter Yost, Jake Bruton. We get into uh, some really good conversations. A lot of times we don't always agree. Um, and I always throw a really good dad joke in there for you dads out there. So if you like that, go check it out. And uh, don't forget about all my colleagues on the Build Show Network. A lot of great contributors putting up stuff every week. Great stuff. Certainly worth watching. So go check it out. Until next time, along with our buildings. <laughs>